Hi, I'm Ellen Munchauer and welcome back to Johnny Benny Campus News. We go now to Austin Salmon to catch us up with our Johnny and Benny basketball teams in this week's sports segment. Thanks Ellen. This past week in CSB SGU Sports, the Johnny basketball team won their first two playoff games against Hamlin 86-58 and St. Thomas 80-78. Unfortunately, the Johnnies had a heartbreaking loss against Bethel in the Mayak Championship. The Blazer basketball team swept their first round opponents as well, beating St. Kate's 53-50, but unfortunately experienced a tough loss to St. Thomas in the following round. Our Johnnies and Bennies both had an impressive season and are hoping to build on their success as they look on to future seasons. Baseball and softball is back at CSB SGU this weekend with each team's season opener. Both teams will be facing off against the respected teams of UW Lacrosse. The Johnnies will have their next game on March 1st against Valley City State University, as the Blazers will be matching up against Heidelberg University on March 6th. Both track and field teams hosted an exciting event for the Mayak Indoor Championships, and the Johnnies finished with a tie for fifth place in the men's division, while the Blazers finished second in the women's. As for wrestling, seniors Rob Tate and Teddy Erickson, along with sophomore Luke Dodd and freshman Noah Becker, all qualified for the 2017 NCAA Division III Championships. The championship is scheduled from March 10th through the 11th in La Crosse, Wisconsin. SU has now qualified two or more wrestlers to the NCAA championships in 27 of the last 28 seasons. That's all for this week's CSB SJU Sports Recap. I'm Austin Salmon. Back to you, Ellen. Thanks, Austin. Before we get into what's going on around campus, we go first to headline news with Lauren Lafeber. Thanks, Ellen. First, the bodies of 74 migrants washed ashore on the western coast of Libya on Tuesday after the remains of a torn rubber boat were found. These boats can hold up to 120 people and officials expect more bodies to eventually wash ashore. The Mediterranean route from Libya to Italy has seen record numbers of migrant drownings in 2016. Libyan Coast Guard Ayub Ghassim stated, We are seeing the new boats, which are not equipped with anything, but they carry more people, he said. This is going to be even more disastrous for migrants. To help avoid future tragedies, the Libyan government plans to step up training for the Libyan Coast Guards in cooperating with neighboring countries. Second, on Wednesday, NASA announced seven new Earth-like exoplanets that were discovered orbiting their own star called TRAPPIST-1. Three of these seven planets are in habitable zones, meaning liquid water could exist on their rocky surface. The seven planets circle one star, which is 40 light years away. This is relatively close in the grand scheme of things. The planets are also close to each other. Being on the surface of one of the planets would reveal a nice view of the planet next to it, which could be the same size, if not bigger, than the view we see of the moon. This is the largest discovery of exoplanets around the same star outside of our solar system and is a big step in the quest for habitable environments. And so, the search for life outside planet Earth continues. And last, Two Minnesota representatives have proposed a bill that would lower the drinking age to 19 instead of 21. The senators proposing the bill states the goal is to ultimately make the environment safer, including on college campuses. Representative Hope stated, Overall, we're hoping that this will demystify and hopefully reduce the amount of drinking. So kids are more likely to have a glass of wine with a certain meal or a beer. Many parents have emailed the senators with support on the bill, stating they would rather have their children going to college with some exposure to alcohol to hopefully reduce binge drinking. Join us next week for headline news to keep you up to date with your top news stories. This is Lauren Lefebvre reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Thanks, Lauren. On campus this week, there are a few events you might want to attend before you head out for spring break this Friday. For anyone looking to get an FAE before break begins, Wind Ensemble and Symphonic Band will be performing in Escher Auditorium on Wednesday, March 1st at 7.30 p.m. This Thursday's Politics in a Pint in Brother Willie's Pub will be on African Americans in the Republican Party at 4.15 p.m. The conversation will be led by CSB alum Jonah Van Doon, history professor Shannon Smith, along with both a CSB and SJU student. Free pizza will be served. And on that note, we turn it over to Zach Eichten with our political segment. Thanks, Ellen. Starting off, last week, the Trump administration rolled back protections for transgender students that had come about during the Obama administration. The push comes from Attorney General Jeff Sessions. The former Alabama senator recently confirmed 52 to 47 for the post by the Senate. 
The push was initially resisted by Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, who cited a moral obligation to protect all students from bullying and harassment. Last week, JBCN reported that Michael Flynn, President Trump's former national security advisor, resigned amid allegations of ties to Russia. He is now being replaced by Lieutenant General H.R. McMaster. In the days after his arrival at the White House, McMaster has been reorganizing officials his predecessor had moved. One proposal would be to restore the Director of National Intelligence and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs to full membership on the National Security Council. This had been the case under the Obama administration. It is still uncertain what part Steve Bannon, the former Breitbart News founder and senior advisor to President Trump, would play on the National Security Council. In other news, Scott Pruitt, the new head of the Environmental Protection Agency, recently had 6,000 pages of emails made public. The emails highlighted his close relationship to major oil and gas producers, electric utilities companies, and political groups that oppose environmental regulation. Many environmental groups are protesting, saying that he worked with these groups to reduce environmental regulation and he should not be in charge of the department that regulates the environment. That's all from Politics This Week. Back to you, Ellen. Thanks, Zach. As all of you know, spring break begins this Friday. Classes end at 6 p.m. and the campus will be closed beginning at 8 p.m. until Sunday, March 12th at 9 a.m. Residents who will be staying on campus were required to submit a break stay request ahead of time. That's all for this week's episode. I'm Ellen Munchauer reporting for Johnny Benny Campus News. Enjoy the rest of your week and have a safe break.